5.30 a.m. When Randy opens his eyes, he realizes that all the spectators are no longer present, but the performer is still planted firmly on his cock, which is still erect, much to his dismay. I didn't know the show went on even after everyone leaves, Randy says excitedly. Oh yes, the chosen are pleasure for the remainder of the night, the mystery woman explains. Oh, I, I, uh, I can't stay all night. Maybe a few more hours. I need to get home, Randy says. But why, Randy? You're the special one for today. Are you enjoying being inside me, Randy? Oh, fuck yeah. I've had a lot of pussy, but I think yours has got to be the best. So why not stay? Does it have something to do with that little gold ring on your left hand? The exhibitionist inquires. Smiling a little, Randy rubs the gold wedding band involuntarily. Yeah, I'm married. Does she know that you are unfaithful? Yes, she hates it, but she can't do anything about it, Randy confesses. Why? Why don't you have sex with your wife? She asks. She can't anymore. It hurts her too much. She had too many children and now her pelvic floor is damaged. He explains. You must have a number of children, she says. Seven. See, I don't believe in birth control. My soldiers need to swim to their targeted destination. The seventh almost killed her, and now she's in constant pain. I told her. All that is too bad, but I need to get some pussy regular. So if she can't do it, I can find some bitches that can. Slowly, she undulates her hips moving her tightness over his erection once again. Gripping her thighs, Randy begins to move contrary to her movements for deeper penetration. You're going to have to let me get this every day, Randy croaks out between moans. You're just my type, Randy. I'll give you all that you can take and more. Leaning over, she grips Randy's shoulders strongly and begins to pop her hips quickly and forcefully. The sound of her pelvis smacking against his slightly echoes in the semi-empty room. From behind, her vaginal juices slosh and splash all over the legs of his pants. Randy tries to keep up with her pace, but as the pleasure quickly builds, he is only able to lie beneath her and hold on tight. With her hips now a blur, she lets go of him, but still maintains the horizontal posture of her upper body over his. Then she grabs the hoop earrings through her nipples and pulls strongly. Soon her eyes roll back into her head so that only the sclera can be seen and her vagina clamps down around his erection with vice-like tightness, causing Randy to scream rather than moan. When he ejaculates, his back arcs up off of the bed once again and only seems to bow his body further and further skyward. With the extreme pleasure transforming into searing pain, Randy screams as he begins to pummel her about the head and neck, but to no avail. The semen continues to flow, increasing tenfold as her orgasm takes hold. With her lower body moving separately from her upper body, her hips appear to vibrate as Randy's face begins to be drained of color. He fastens his hands around her throat and tries to squeeze, but his hands swiftly grow weak as the skin of his arms shrivels, revealing prominent veins and cords of muscle. Although his robust chest and broad shoulders had once filled the blue work shirt near to bursting and now lay saggy and unshapely against his concave chest cavity. Gasping for breath, Randy's cheeks wither and his lips parch as the bony shape of his skull grows more and more visible. With his body bowed into a near-perfect U, his eyes roll back into their orbits and his spine breaks with a sickly, audible snap. When his body collapses, you can hear hollow bones clanking against each other. A light dust rises from his lifeless body as the mystery woman becomes still and casually rises to her feet. She has bruises all over her face and very visible handprints around her throat. Rubbing her lower abdomen, the woman moans in ecstasy as a flushed glow spreads from her pelvis and radiates outward through her entire body. When it reaches her neck and face, the bruises immediately fade, 
and the skin around her mouth and eyes tightens, revealing a youth only witnessed those few years after puberty. In one motion, she removes the mask and steps down to the floor to be greeted by the lummox, who was manning the door. You look exquisite, mistress, he laments. Thank you. My reservoirs are almost full. We are nearly complete. Will tomorrow be the last day, mistress? The lummox asks. Yes, she says as she rubs her taut, nearly glowing skin. After tomorrow, I should have enough to last at least 50 years. 11.30 a.m. The front door opens and Eli comes stumbling into the house, knocking over the coat rack as he enters. Hearing the commotion, Vera quickly meets him in the foyer, holding a beer in her hand. Good morning, Eli. How was work? Vera asks with a guarded smile. Snatching the beer from her, Eli goes it in nearly one gulp, not missing a single drop. My cell phone is off, Eli mumbles while leering at her through nearly closed eyelids. It is? I, I thought I had more time. After paying the electric bill and buying groceries, there wasn't anything left. They said they wouldn't turn it off until next week. I... I'm sorry, Eli, she speedily finishes. Unbuckling his belt, Eli says, sorry. Were you sorry when you asked me for that fucking yarn? All that shit you buy, you should make more money when you sell that bullshit. Taking a step back, Vera says, I did what I could with what you gave me, Eli. If you didn't lose so much money. Her words quickly trail off as Eli quickly yanks his belt from the belt loops causing it to strike the wall to his right. If I didn't lose, is that what you say? I spend my money how the fuck I want to. It's your job to run my house. And when something gets turned off, it's your goddamn fault. You understand, bitch? Eli yells. Without waiting for a reply from his cowering wife, Eli lashes out with the belt and strikes Vera across the face, sending her flailing backward to the floor with a scream. With her top lip split open and oozing blood, Vera tries to escape, scooting backward across the floor on her back and elbows. Staring down at her with vacant eyes, he slowly stalks Vera while wrapping the belt tightly around his right hand. When the misused accessory is wrapped completely and pulled tight, Vera turns over and tries to scramble to her feet, but Eli strikes her squarely in the spine, causing her to fall forward onto her face, locked in a silent scream. As she begins to crawl, Eli mounts her while grabbing a handful of her hair and yanks her head back. Taking a moment to study his target, he punches his squirming wife in the nose and mouth repeatedly. When the streams of blood begin to flow from both orifices, he drops her to the floor, grabs the hem of her house dress, and yanks it up above her waist. Shaking the belt off of his hand, he unbuttons and unzips his pants, freeing his erect cock. Grabbing her panties with one hand, he snatches them off of her body with one clean jerk. You can't pay a fucking bill. At least you can be good for this, Eli remarks. As Vera begins to softly weep, Eli grabs her hips and pulls her to her knees. Parting her legs with his own, he rubs some saliva on the head of his erection and begins jabbing forcefully at her vaginal lips until he forces his way through with an audible grunt. Recklessly, he plows into his subservient wife, who winces strongly with each thrust. It's the only time you ever any good. Only time you're tight. You had a cunt worth a damn, I wouldn't need to fuck Denny's ditzy ass daughter. Pussy's only good after I have to whoop your ass. Yeah, only time this old ass pussy feels good and new. Yeah. Pushing Vera to the floor. He continues to jab into her mostly dry vagina until he grunts primitively, dispelling the culmination of his violation deep inside her. After taking a few moments to recover, Eli unceremoniously withdraws and gets shakily to his feet. Stumbling a few steps back, he places a hand to his stomach, leans over to his right side, and vomits on the floor near his wife's feet. With the rancid smell of bile and old liquor enveloping them both, Eli wipes his mouth and pulls up his pants. Clean this shit up, Eli commands as he leaves her on the floor alone. 
After several moments of silence, Vera can hear him stumbling up the stairs. Next, she can hear the creak of the bedroom door, followed by it being slammed. Lastly, she hears the recoil of the mattress as Eli collapses onto the bed. With her weeping at an end, Vera gets effortlessly to her feet. Pushing her hair out of her face, she wipes her bleeding nose and mouth with the back of her hand, and after staring at the smear of blood left there, she licks it clean. Suddenly, the red and bruised skin around her nose and cheek return to their normal healthy complexion. The lacerations of her nose and lips seal up and vanish as well. Unbuttoning the front of the frumpy oversized house dress, Vera steps out of it and drops it on the puddle of vomit on the floor. With a slight smirk on her face, she gets to her knees and begins wiping up the waist as the hooped piercings in her nipples glisten in the late morning sun.